Hi, it's Danielle Mercurio. And before we get into the juice that this episode holds for all of us, I want you to take a moment and see what's happening down below. What are you doing with your legs right now? Are they open? Are they crossed? Are they in some awkward position where they're really tense and tight? Hmm. Notice that. Notice the way that our body naturally falls into posture and f- position. And take a moment to reflect on that. This episode is all around the notion of what would happen if you uncrossed your legs and allowed for magic to create from that space. Because so often we have blocks that our body is creating without us even realizing it, without us even knowing. When we cross our legs, we cross and we cut off our potential. We cut off our flow. We cut off our ability to be open and relaxed and at ease. And a lot of that comes from conditioning. You look at old school forms of etiquette, and rules of the society, a lady always keeps her legs crossed. A lady must keep her legs closed at all times. Now, there can be modesty involved with having your legs open. I'm not saying that we should just be disrespectful and completely just showing it all for the world to see. However, there is this notion of conditioning that have made us kind of take this form where legs are crossed, be a lady, be good. These are the rules. And really these rules are just kind of getting us more in a bind. So let's get out of that. I want us to notice now, sometimes it does feel comfortable to cross our legs and that's totally fine, right? But we want to be noticing the frequency. We want to be noticing when we're doing it right? So it's like, if you're crossing your legs, and you're just reading a book, and you're having a really beautiful time, awesome. But if there's other kind of moments where you're tense, you're at work, you're tight, you're worried about what other people are thinking, and you're kind of tensed up, and your legs are crossed, and you're squeezing your thighs together, that is blocking the flow. That is you having a circumstance where you're actually feeling really conflicted with what it is that you want, and what it is that the expectations of the outer world want from you. And we've got to release that. We've got to undo that. We've got to uncross. So let's talk a little bit deeper into why. What is the magic that's held? What are we uh, trapping or not allowing to flow by our legs being crossed? Well, that would be our sacral, yoni, reproductive, feminine area. And when we look at that, we have to start looking at the power that exudes within that area, which is something when I was growing up, I never really thought about. I mean, I knew clearly I had a vagina. I knew that it was part of the reproductive system. I understood what getting your period was all about. I knew that as far as sexual relations go, this part was going to be uh, the, the catalyst. However, I never, ever thought about my vaginal area as a sacred space, as a place that held wisdom and my femininity and answers and truth. I never looked at it in that way. I never looked at the intelligence that my own vaginal area carried. And once I started to open up more so into my own sense of self, once I started to go within and learn that it's not all about what people think, it's not all about the stories that run on constant, constant auto loop in my mind, but it's also about what my heart has to say. It's also about learning how to trust my soul and my intuitive guidance and further It's about tapping into the power of my own pussy and tapping into the language that lives there. It's a very gorgeous, intelligent system that we have been equipped with, which 
we really need to start listening to and opening up into. And so this notion of um, closing our legs, of feeling like we have to be proper, of restricting that area is actually not giving our entire system, our entire intuitive feminine essence room to breathe, so to speak. So if we look at it from the area of nature and we look at our cycles, we see how our body kind of processes things. You know, we call our uh, period our moon cycle because it correlates to the same cycles of the moon. So for me, I bleed every new moon. Now, typically within a year, what will happen is, is this, I will bleed on the new moon for a few months, and then eventually my period will start to shift so that it will bleed on the first quarter moon. It will do that for about a month or so. Then it will start bleeding on the full moon, which it will do for a few months before then moving into the last quarter moon and then rounding into the new moon again. So within one year or up to 13 months, my cycle will move through the journey of the moons, you know, bleeding on the new moon and really making its way all the way around to the full moon and back to the new moon again. And that's a really beautiful way to organically bleed with the moon throughout a 12 to 13 month cycle. Now, if you're on birth control or some other kind of uh, fertility aid, you may not be able to do this. So this is me speaking from not being on any birth control. Um, I really am it personally, it's not for me. Uh, it's, it never really has been to be honest, even when I wasn't aware and I was like, I just want to be on the pill cause it's cool. And I see all my girlfriends taking their pills at certain times when their little alarm goes off. And I want to have a little compact with all these little tiny pills in it that I get to take once a day, because it indicates that either I'm clearing my acne, regulating my hormones or having sex, which I want to have. Um, but I didn't need it to regulate my hormones and I didn't have acne and I wasn't having sex. And then even when I was having sex and I was like, oh, yes, I'm having sex on a regular basis. I'm going to take the pill. Oh, my body did not like it at all. Really bad headaches. I fell deeper into depression. Not a good mix for me. So I just, without even realizing it, just kind of swore off being on the pill in my early 20s just because I didn't like it. Now it's just not a great fit for me. I track my cycle in other ways. I have infrequent sex. So, you know, I, uh, I, I find other methods. Um, and you know, I think when I'm in a, even when I'm in a deeper committed relationship, I do not plan on doing that. That's a little side tangent on me and birth control, but do what works for you. But when we go to the space of our moon cycle. And if you uh, have your period regularly, and even if you don't, it's really important that you listen to this because I found that once I started opening up to my body and I started talking to my uterus and my reproductive organs, I started saying like, you know, the moon is really powerful in the fact that every 28 to 30 days, the moon will go through an entire cycle. And I want my body to respond to this energy because the moon is connected to the feminine emotions, water, the waves, the ebbs and flows of life. And I want to be more connected. And so I started telling my body cycle with the moon, and every, every time I would get my, my period, I'd say, oh, you're getting so much closer to being in sync with the new moon. And I would keep encouraging her. And I would say it took about six months for me to get to the place where I've been for the past, I'd say four years now I've been cycling with the moon. So it took a while. It wasn't like a one month thing where all of a sudden my period shifted. However, it got to a space where um, it's been on point. And I'd say it's been about four years now that I've been cycling with the moon. And I just love it. Um It just makes me feel like really connected and it's easier to keep track of because I'm like, oh, okay. On, you know, if you're listening in real time, I'm like, cool. On December 26th, which is actually a solar eclipse new moon, and I'm calling it the solar eclipse mess, I will be bleeding. Wonderful. Good to know. Pack, pack accordingly uh, for my holiday travels because there will be bleeding involved. Um, And we look at, you know, that, that process as, a really beautiful time of shedding and of release and also a fresh start when you're cycling with the new moon. If you're cycling with the full moon um, and bleeding on those 
uh, periods. And it's a time of release and grounding into what it is that you really want and what you're really um, evoking going forward. So there's a lot of power in syncing with the moon. And we look at nature and how it corresponds in that brilliance and that intelligence of the fact that nature you know, created the moon and nature also created our bodies and created a system to reproduce. And whether you have any intentions of reproducing in the form of children, we can still look at that technology for our own benefit. Because as humans, part of the protocol for many of us is to continue to reproduce and procreate, but there's always going to be a limit to that. You can only have so many children within your lifespan and you're only going to um, be bearing children at certain points. So what do we do with our reproductive system when it's not being used to create a child? Well, we can use it to manifest. We can use it to call in what it is that we want. We can use it as ways to unlock a deeper sense of our own creativity and confidence. So there's a lot of power in that too. So how are we using our reproductive system? Um, If part of your intention is to procreate children, beautiful, but there's also other ways that we can use it. And if you're not sure if children are part of the picture for you, there are still really beautiful ways to stay in touch with your reproductive system. So I really believe even if children aren't in the picture or aren't going to be part of how you're moving forward, I really want you to still embrace your reproductive system and continue to cycle and bleed as part of showing up, um, identifying as the the female and also as a way to create and listen to um, the wisdom that lives inside of you. You don't have to be a mother to access this information. We all get to if you're operating with the reproductive organs. And so um, the moon cycles also teach us patience. When we have a new moon, um, that's a time to start fresh, to think about what seeds we want to plant, to think about you know this rich soil, this gorgeous moment of opportunity. But we, it's not an overnight success. What happens on a new moon typically doesn't start to move through until we get closer to the full moon, which takes about two weeks. And then we don't really see the fruition of it until we get back to the new moon again, which takes about a month. We can't force this stuff. And same for what you're trying to bring into the world, whether it be an actual child, whether it be a relationship, whether it be a career goal, whatever it may be, we can't force it. We can't say that this is going to happen tonight. We can't say that by putting the seed in the soil, it is going to be a tree tomorrow. We can say that it will take roots. We will say that it has started. We will say that something has been initiated. But even if you meet the man of your dreams or the the human of your dreams tomorrow, you still aren't going to get married that moment. You still aren't going to commit completely. You're still not going to know everything about each other. You can fall in love with them very quickly. You can get to know them. You can be connected, but there's still a journey of growth. No matter what, there's still going to be growth involved, no matter how quickly it happens. So we have to honor the process. We have to honor this thing called patience and trusting that there will be phases of the moon no matter what, and we'll show up for them accordingly as we show up for our lives. So that's kind of the piece of the moon cycles, how they, they factor in with our own periods and how we can use them as a way to track our everyday life, track what it is that we're doing, and also evoke this feeling of patience. I think for many of us, we're pretty patient once we bleed um, to not uh, to be like, oh man, that was so much fun. I can't wait till, or oh woman, or oh human. I'm, I'm trying to say, oh man, so much especially in this episode. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, that was so great. I can't wait to, to bleed again. You're pretty okay with the fact that I could wait another 28 to 30 days before this happens again. Uh, so it's the same thing for our goals. It's like, okay, cool. Like I can wait the 28 to 30 days for this to come back into fruition. And so something to think about in that way. We also want to look at the chakra system. So our chakras are these beautiful energetic portals that um, tie into um, our body. They live along the, uh, the, the the line of the spine. And every chakra kind of governs a certain part of our body and holds a certain place in how we show up energetically. And so the reproductive area is tied to our sacral chakra. It's the second chakra. It's right above the root chakra. And our sacral is a a place that has a lot of our intuitive 
wisdom. It's a place where we store our creativity. It's a place where we feel safe and secure. It's a place where we're able to be open and expressive. And I think that, you know, our society, the patriarchal system knew that about the woman. It knew that this area could create life. And so it knew that this area could probably create some other things too. Very powerful, very magical. And so in time, the woman was shut down. And so in time, as part of our female lineage, this area was not expressed. We close our legs. We're not allowed to be sexy or heard. We're not allowed to showcase our individuality and express new ideas and innovation. And because of that, the sacral chakra area in a lot of ways has been dormant, has kind of been caked over. I imagine it like for me, like it got very muddy. And through opening up into my own intuition, through practices like kundalini yoga and breath work, through surrounding myself with other empowered people that are opening up and courageously expressing who they are and their ideas, I've been able to open up that area as well. Also, I found that, you know, um, being in more empowering relationships, I've been able to open that up. When I was first dating, I was very submissive in my relationships. I gave, I, I identify as a female in that is attracted to hetero relationships. I definitely have been gender fluid at some points. I've experimented with women before, but overall, uh, my sexual preference is with the male form. And I found that early on in my relationships with men, I definitely gave them the power. I definitely allowed them to dominate. I definitely allowed them to decide where this was going. And I only felt like I had a say if it was allowed to have a say, or it was convenient to have a say, or we were on the same page, but I never felt um, able to say what I want and speak up. And I was always so afraid of them leaving that I would be silent or I would kind of be like a doormat energy, which is not a turn on to a man. Like who wants to date a woman that isn't speaking up for herself or saying what she needs or just agreeing with the man all the time or anyone, right? Like any partner who wants to be in a partnership of any kind where the person is just agreeing and trying to like not step on anybody's toes to like not disrupt it. But like, have some disruption in your relationship. Speak your truth. Say what's on your mind because that's where growth lives and expansion. And if you're not going to continue to grow and expand with that person because you expressed yourself and they don't like it, then move the frick on. That's your green light right there. That's your indicator. I spoke up. I spoke my truth. I said what it was that was on my mind and it was not reciprocated. Goodbye. Moving on. Communication is so valuable in a relationship. And I was denying that. I was denying my growth. I was denying being in relationships that were a true match because I was too scared of being alone or being perceived as undesirable. So I tried to make myself desirable through conforming to what they wanted. And essentially that just made me a doormat in relationships. And it really shriveled uh, my sacral area and really made it unhappy. And I found that my vaginal area would lash out. It would, um, when I would be in certain relationships, it would break out in certain, not um, STD or STI related symptoms. It looked like it could be, but it was more like almost like an allergy um, to the situation, to that person. And I later realized in life that it was just my own uh, body's response to be like, what the, f- what the fuck are you doing, Danielle? Like, this person is not for you. Like, yeah, they may be fun in certain moments. Yeah, you may have a great time when you're together. But outside of when you're together, you're not getting your needs met. And further, you're not expressing what your needs are. So it really has nothing to do with them and everything with how you're showing up in this relationship, how you're allowing yourself to carry the role that you want in this dynamic. And the role that you're carrying is not an aligned match to who you are deep down and the way that you could show up and be fulfilled and lit up in a relationship because we see so much more for you. So my body would respond in ways um, that was kind of trying to show me like, look, like this isn't an alignment. And again, I don't want to put too much emphasis on like the other person because 
sure, like they're coming, like we attracted each other for a reason and um, we were kind of coming at it with our own stuff. But at the end of the day, it is my choice of who I wish to engage with, who I want to give consent to, to be with me and further how I want to show up for that relationship. And if it feels like it's something that we could evolve into and really communicate and build together than beautiful. However, if not, that's also okay. And that's where it becomes less about the other person and more about myself and my awareness and my choice. When I start to see things that are misaligned, and if I speak up and I'm still not seeing what it is that I would want in return, then that's my conscious choice to move on or make a decision to say like, this isn't working for me. And so I'm not going to work it anymore. I don't have to. And that's really important. And so um, once I started to open up into that more, um, I felt a lot of release in my sacral area. Um, I felt honestly a lot of pain in that area when I was having breakthroughs of realizing my worth and realizing what I deserve and realizing what I'm capable of when it comes to my own self-love, the love that I give and the love that I receive. And when I was having those breakthroughs, I actually suffered from a lot of pain in my sacral area, lower back, my glute area, lots of pain because it was all releasing. It was years and years of being clogged up and tense and tight. And so through taking ownership of my worth, through identifying where I couldn't play small anymore when it came to my own self, my idea of life and my relationships, there was um, some pain involved and it wasn't pleasant. And I had to look at some hard truths. However, with that, I opened up more. And from there, I got to start to talk with my pussy, my yoni. Mm, And it's so delicious when you get to. So I'm a big fan of self-care masturbation, self-pleasure. And that's one way to start to talk to that. What I used to like about masturbation before I was as open and conscious as I am now was it was my way to get out of my head for a little bit because I didn't really know meditation very well, but I did know that I liked the fact that when I created pleasure in that sacred region, I would be out of my head. I couldn't be thinking about what I had to do. I couldn't be beating myself up. I couldn't be thinking about what does that person think of me? Because if I did, my mind would wander and so would my pleasure. And so to stay in my pleasure, I had to release the thoughts from my mind and go deeper down into that space and really allow my body to evoke the pleasure that felt good to it and let it lead. Because think about it, when you're in a form of self-pleasure, your mind, you kind of want to just let your mind go. And if you're having trouble doing that, whether it be self-pleasure or having pleasure with a partner and you're still in your mind, you really want to just like drop down into your heart, drop down into your belly, drop down into your pussy. Drop down into those spaces because it's it's honestly like you're having sex from your head, which is like uh, <laughs> for a guy that's a, not a bad thing. Uh, but but when you're having sex from your mind, um, it it's a little too analytical, it's a little bit too logistical, and it's a little bit too going through the motions. And we can get stuck on, you know, what's going on, stuck on the tangible tactical stuff, stuck on, you know, are they having a good time? Am I having a good time? What do I want? Do I need to make a noise? How is my body responding? And it's too observational. And so we give our mind a little bit of permission to say, mind, you can leave now. I'm going to I'm gonna focus on my pleasure. I love you, mind. I love how you help me in day-to-day aspects of my life. But for right now, I'm focusing on my pleasure. So you can leave. I'll talk to you later. And let your mind go. And then from there, start to feel your breath move in and out through your heart. Start to feel what your belly feels like. Start to feel the area further down, your yoni, your pussy. Start to breathe from that space. Start to feel what the mind of your heart has to say. Start to notice what the wisdom of your yoni wants. And let that space talk to you. Let her guide you to what feels pleasurable. Ooh, yes, that feels good. Ooh, over here, 
ooh, I lost it for a moment. Let's get it back. Hmm. And it starts to create signals and communication. And that's what I found really valuable before I really understood how to communicate with my body or really understand um, intuitive guidance and ways of being with oneself. I found ways to use pleasure as my compass. And when you use pleasure as your compass, you start to release some of that mental chatter and you start to open up into pleasure. And through that pleasure, you start to move into momentum. You start to move into ecstasy. You start to move into orgasm. And through orgasm, we have a beautiful opportunity to release. And we can use that as an opportunity to shed what it is that we don't want and also empower what it is that we do. So in the form of self-pleasure, once you become more intentional, once you start to talk to your, you know, sacral intelligence, once you start to communicate and open up to your vaginal region, you can take a few deep, deep breaths and you can start to use the power of the pussy to guide you. Start opening up to her. What do you want today? What do you want me to do about this? What do you think about this situation? What do you think about this person? Is it worth another date? Is this job something that I want to step into? Is this friendship worth continuing? Start to ask her questions and you'll see that she's not just here to, you know, have sex and make babies, but she's also here to be your counsel, to be your sacred guidance. And so we can use self-pleasure as a way not only to feel really good and evoke you know, really gorgeous, pleasurable feelings and ecstasy. We can also use it as a way to brainstorm I, or, or pussy storm. Oh my God, I love it. Pussy storm. Uh, I'm writing that down. Um, ideas. You know, some of my ideas that I've had have been created during times where I am completely in touch with my pussy, completely in touch with my self-pleasure. Um, and it's been less about how can I get myself off per se from a physical perspective and how can I tap deeper into my soul wisdom? And I've thought of so many beautiful ideas. I have then taken those ideas, what I see for myself, big picture, what I'm looking for, what I'm attracted to, what turns me on, what I'm calling in in life. And I match that energy to the energy of my orgasm, the energy of me peaking, the energy of my rhythm that is happening, the undulation, the flow of what it is that I desire. And when I reach that point, that peak of orgasm, boom, that manifestation is created right with it. Now, one thing that's interesting when you try this out, especially in the beginning, it, you may you may have to try a few times before you can get it to match your orgasm. It took me a little bit to kind of play with it, so to speak, because um, sometimes when we're not quite in alignment with our worth, it's hard to then match your orgasm to it. So you might think, oh, I have a really great idea or like, I really want to manifest $10,000 this month, or I really want to manifest this job opportunity, or I really want to manifest a new partner. Take it to your pleasure because what's going to happen is that pleasure is going to show you how much you really believe it because your body will respond. If your body is here for it and turned on by this idea, by this notion of making an extra 10K, by this notion of calling in a promotion, by this notion of bringing in a new partner, it will match it. Your orgasm will meet that desire and it will be put into a beautiful position for manifestation. However, if there's any part of you that's still doubting it, that doesn't feel in complete alignment, that doesn't feel worthy of it, it's going to be really hard to match your orgasm to it. I guarantee it. Try it out. Try it out because you're going to be pleasantly or particularly surprised by what happens. And so for me, for some of the things that I was looking to call in, I wasn't quite ready for it yet energetically. I didn't quite feel worthy of it. And that's why I was having trouble keeping my, my um, pussy in alignment with it. However, the more that I stayed with it, the more that I stepped up to my worth, the more that I believed in what it was that I desired, the more my desires became a well-rounded match for my masturbation and my orgasm. So I know something big is coming as soon as that moment hits where the thing that I want clicks with my pleasure. I'm like, oh shit, it's going down. We're, we're, we're here for it. And I know it. And then when in, I, I call in things that I can't quite 
sync up. It just means that there's, you know, some work to do. There's still some more exploration and that's beautiful too. It becomes a gorgeous opportunity to sink into that in a new way. So that's a really beautiful piece as well. Um, you know, our, our, that, and so that point of what I was talking about, okay, so let's say you get to that space where you're able to start to bring together your desires with your pleasure and you're able to use your orgasms as a way to manifest. And you can do it solo. You can also do it with a partner. I say do it more so with a partner that you feel really comfortable with, that you trust, or you're in a space where um, you're not attached to them. There's no feeling of um, uncertainty. So if you're doing it with a partner and you're using your sexual relations with that partner to help you call in and manifest something really big through your union, through your orgasm together, make sure that it's someone that you feel really secure with. Make sure it's someone that you feel that you trust. It doesn't have to be like a hundred percent committed relationship. It just has to be someone that there's not uncertainty with because you don't want to call that into the the manifestation. It, it can allow things to be really messy. So um, either, you, you know, with someone that you really feel safe and your body feels very open and trusting with, um, and you feel like you're receiving that back is really a beautiful conduit to uh, doing that. And so then essentially what happens is just like when you're having sexual relations with a partner, um, or with yourself, right? Like when, when you're with a partner, if we look at kind of the science of uh, creating life, you know, the the two peaks of orgasm coming together, the man ejaculating into the woman um, at the right time of fertility, then of course creates um, life and creates the possibility for child. The sperm um, implants the seed, uh, the seed, the, um, the sperm seed uh, implants into the egg. And um, if it's one of the days that the woman is fertile, boom, beautiful. And do, side note, did you know you're only really fertile um, like three days out of the month? So typically the two weeks that follow when you bleed is your most fertile window and sperm can live up um, in the body for up to five days. So that window of fertility within that five day range is typically when it's going to happen. Very similar to the way that we manifest as well, right? Like again, we look at the moon cycles and we look and we say, okay, new moon is when we plant the seed. Um, it takes a little bit of time for it to kind of catch and click, so to speak. We've got to try a few times. Usually the first time you go to make a baby, it doesn't always work. Same thing for the things that we're manifesting. Um, but it also can, right? I know I have friends that got it, got it right the first time they tried. Um, and now they're with child. So when we look at this notion of using sex, using, um, that to create a life, a child, um, we can do the same thing with um, other things in our life. So just like you may use sexual relations to create a baby, you can use it to create what it is you want. So we want to, again, uncross our legs because we uncross our legs to open up into our power. We walk with a little bit of extra grace and confidence and flow because we're walking with this sense, with this knowing that like, I know what my pussy is capable of. I know that I carry this beautiful system within me that is the creator, that is the manifester. And when I tap to her voice, when I tap into her pleasure, when I communicate and I clear my sacral chakras, when I open up to the wisdom that's there, I am one powerful sorceress. I am one divine creator. And so you have the ability to create just like nature, just like a higher intelligence within you. However, you must make the time to connect to this space. You must notice when your body is tense and crossed and tight. You must notice when you're not making time for pleasure, solo pleasure and pleasure with other people. It may be with your partner, even just pleasure with your friends or travel, relaxing, letting loose, letting go. That is what the feminine is all about. The feminine is not about control. It's about having a sense of, of, of being in control, but not controlling. And there's a difference. When you know how to be in control of your pussy versus controlling your pussy, so much different because there's trust and there's security involved. And so the feminine does not control. The feminine trusts. The feminine leans back. The feminine knows what she needs to do and what she doesn't need to do. She doesn't force. She doesn't try to 
you know, make something happen beyond her control because she knows that that's not the best use of her or her energy. And she also knows that's not being in the flow. And she also knows that that's not what she's here for. And so allowing yourself to lean back, to open up a little bit, to be a little bit lighter, to kind of brush off some of the small stuff, to not be so eager to what you have to do or what you want. Stop meddling so much. Know that if you put out there what it is that you want, it will arrive. When you place your order for a package online, it will come to your door. You don't have to you know, go to the warehouse. You don't have to find the truck driver and get it yourself in order to get what it is that you want. You have to put in your order, lean back and say, it's coming. It literally will be at my door any day now. And that's beautiful. I don't have to check the tracking. I don't have to worry about how it's going to get here. I don't have to do a blessed thing. And that's beautiful. And that's where we can come together and really take ownership of what we're worth and also ownership of the trust that is coming to fruition in the best way possible. Because when you do that, when you're not worried about the how, the how can happen in really exciting ways. I don't know how the package gets to my door sometimes. I don't know if it was some things were going on at the warehouse, if someone had to do something in, in particular, if someone had to you know wrap the order, if someone had to give it to someone else to get there, if someone had to use GPS. Who the frick knows? But it got there and it got, it got, it got to me in the best way possible. I don't need to know how it got to me. I just need to know that I wanted it and I needed to know that I knew it was going to arrive. So if you know that you want something and you know it's going to arrive and you test it out with your pleasure and it feels like a match, then it is happening. That is where you trust. But if you don't trust, you are going to meddle. You're going to keep checking the tracking. You're going to call FedEx. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And you're going to make a big mess out of something that you really didn't need to. Then we can relax and we can sigh and we can exhale. And it's a beautiful thing. So I want you to start to realize that manifestation, law of attraction, it's not about your mind. It's not. Your mind carries logistics. Your mind will remind you of what maybe you need to do to help play a part in all of this, some of the things that you can do, but it's not going to do it for you. Your mind is not here to control how positive or negative you are. It's not here to make sure that you read enough memes to figure out how healed you are. Your mind is, is really not involved in the manifestation process very much. It has a very small role, very small percentage. And so it's about your feelings. It's about your flow. It's about knowing that there is a creative force inside of you. And that is very powerful. And that is very attractive. And that is very alluring. You know how you see some individuals just walk into a room and you're just like, oh, who is that person? Like there's something about them. It's because they're in touch with their inner creator. It's because they're in touch with the feeling of uncrossing those legs. It's because they're here for it in a way that maybe not all of us are. It's like they know something and it's because they know themselves. And that's something that we will always be exploring deeper and deeper and deeper within this lifetime, but you might as well start to take ownership of it now. Start the exploration process today. Begin the journey at this point. And from there, you'll be so much more open, so much more relaxed, less relying on your mind to have to figure everything out and more in a space where you have a power that lies deeper down to help, to create, to flow. So I hope that that provides uh, some deeper meaning. And I really want you to just be with this, explore it, and start to take some breaths to talk to the space down below. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first. You might actually experience silence. You might not be able to connect. But I would say just keep trying. Keep trying to find new ways to connect with your pussy, with that part of you. And I guarantee that you'll start to feel more connected. You'll start to even appear a little softer. You may glow a little bit more. There may be an extra sparkle in your being. Embrace it, honor it, and don't judge the process, right? We want to release any judgments or observations we have around self-pleasure, especially as a woman. You are allowed to touch yourself. You are allowed to be in tune with what your body wants. It's your body. Nobody else controls it. It's yours. You get to decide what you want to do. And it's beautiful whatever you decide. 
I promise there's nothing wrong with you. You are not bad. There are no rules you have to follow. Just show up, lead with your heart, be in touch with your pleasure. And so much will come literally from that point. So if you're feeling this, if this resonates, send me a message. Let us know what the power of the pussy can do for you. Share with your girlfriends. Open these conversations up. It's really important that we start to talk about it so we know that this is allowed and it's fun. Oh, there's so much release from it. So share this out and don't be afraid to share what it is that you love about your body, your worth, your confidence out in the world. And we're creating a much beautiful more meaningful, more desirable place for us to dwell as a feminine society.